Good evening. Today we're discussing how Rikers Island has evolved into New York's largest mental health institution. This transformation highlights a significant crisis in the handling of mentally ill detainees in the city's custody. That's right, Tom. Many detainees, like James Dolo, are stuck in a cycle of moving between jails and state psychiatric facilities, often for years without a conviction. This systemic issue has resulted in over half the population at Rikers being diagnosed with a mental illness. Indeed, Leslie. Detainees like Bernard Dare have been trapped in this cycle for 15 years. The competency restoration process, intended to be a year long, often drags on due to limited psychiatric beds and court delays. Mentally ill detainees face harsh conditions in jails, with inadequate supervision and care. Guards routinely fail to bring them to medical appointments or court appearances, often leaving those flagged as suicide risks unattended. Furthermore, the Correctional Health Services, responsible for medical care in jails, is struggling. Overburdened nurses in psychiatric units are often responsible for too many patients, leading to inappropriate medication and neglect. The release process for mentally ill detainees is also fraught with issues. The system fails to provide adequate discharge planning, essential for connecting them to housing and treatment, which often leads to a cycle of re-incarceration. Despite the efforts to introduce intensive treatment units and therapy programs, the problem persists. Jails can't medicate detainees against their will, leading many to refuse medication that could stabilize them. The city's administration is focusing on reducing violence at Rikers but faces criticism for not adequately addressing the mental health crisis. The Department of Correction asserts that officers receive mental health training, yet the challenges continue. Go ahead, like and subscribe. You will amaze your friends with your knowledge of current events, if you do.